I hope you're having a fabulous summer. We just love gardening here. And you know, every summer we try to add a berry or a fruit bearing tree or bush to our property. And even though we do enjoy eating fruits and berries, we actually don't mind sharing them with birds because there are so many birds that don't come to our bird feeders, but they do come to our backyard to eat all those berries and um, fruits. This year we bought three apple trees. We've added another blueberry bush and a raspberry bush. And the other day I went to a grocery store. I parked in front of a bunch of trees. I got out of my car and all of a sudden there was this commotion right in front of me. It was a flock of wax wings, which I haven't seen anywhere in about a year, that were helping themselves to all the fruits that were growing on those trees. They were not bothered by my presence at all. It was actually pouring rain outside. So I stood there watching them for about half an hour and I managed to film them with my phone. So if you have the space and if you want to bring a wider variety of birds to your backyard, consider planting something that will bring fruits or berries. Lynn Thornton from Calgary is wondering whether red-winged blackbirds feed their young seeds because she has a few males that come to her feeders, grab a seed and then fly to a nearby pond. It looks like they're bringing food to either the young or a mate because they repeat the same trip over and over. Hi Lynn, you asked me if male red-winged blackbirds feed seeds to their youngsters, mainly because you've got several males flying back and forth frequently to a nearby pond from your feeder containing hulled millet, cracked corn, and medium chip sunflower. I must say that it is a wee bit unusual. Rubbing blackbirds eat mainly insects in the summer and seeds including corn, wheat, waste grains, weedy seeds, and native sunflowers in the fall. So you can see that they're quite omnivorous but somewhat seasonal in their feeding habits. But birds are like humans. Each individual bird develops preferences. More important, they're also opportunistic. So taking your easily accessible seed to their mates or youngsters might be an easy option. But I'll bet that it's likely not their first choice. Insects would make a lot more sense in the spring, whether they're feeding youngsters or giving food to their mates to show what good providers they are. Since sunflower seed is highly prized among rubbing blackbirds in general, I'd not be surprised to learn that those males are more interested in that seed in your mix rather than the millet and cracked corn. Let me show you our garden. As you probably know, we stay away from all sorts of pesticides and chemicals because we leave it up to birds to take care of all those unwanted bugs. And there are a few facts that I wanted to share with you. So hummingbirds eat about 1,000 little bugs per day. Chickadees alone need over 7,000 caterpillars to raise just one chick. Nuthatches and woodpeckers love ticks and grackles have huge appetites and on top of emptying your feeders in no time, they actually go and pick up fleas and ticks right off the ground. Another thing that we do to protect our garden from all those bugs is uh, we put up uh, nesting boxes right like, you know, close to our garden because every year house wrens come to nest here and they seem to alternate between the two boxes and they feed their young all sorts of bugs, you know, caterpillars and larvae and flies and grasshoppers and then their nestlings also help themselves to earwigs. While few bird lovers would disagree that the world needs to transition to zero carbon energy sooner than later to minimize the harmful effects of runaway climate change, turning to renewable energy development like wind turbines and cleaner hydroelectric energy can have its downsides too, especially for creatures that travel through the world's airspace. While some debate the true overall impact of collisions and electrocutions on the world's bird populations, there is no doubt that it does occur more often than we would like. Whether wind farms and power lines are poorly designed or badly located or both, they can definitely lead to increased mortality of susceptible birds such as gulls, ibises, storks, owls, vultures and other raptors. A landmark study recently published by over 50 co-authors worldwide offer some hope that we can find ways to make green energy work without harming the very resource we're trying to save. In other words, 
Some places on the planet are better than others to create wind turbine fields and to install power lines, and knowing their location would be exceedingly useful. To identify high vulnerability areas where birds would be at most risk of colliding with a turbine or power line on a species-specific basis, the team of scientists collected GPS data from 1,454 birds from 27 species in Europe and North America and mapped their collision sensitivity in 5 by 5 kilometer grid cells. As expected, the team found that risk exposure varied across the 27 species, with some species flying at heights that enhanced their chances of collisions. Hotspots of vulnerability to collision were also scattered across the chosen study regions with some specific ones identified, for example, near the Strait of Gibraltar and the Bosphorus in Turkey. This study is definitely a step in the right direction, but it remains to be seen whether the corporations, companies and various levels of governments making decisions on green energy programs will pay attention. You know, I did not grow up with Northern Cardinals, so the first time I saw one here in Canada, I naturally just fell in love with these uh, beautiful red birds. And now every time I send presents to friends and family in the old world, I try to include something with a Northern Cardinal. So Northern Cardinals are considered to be one of the most abundant species here in North America, though you don't really see them anywhere on the west coast of Canada and the United States, but you do find them in southwest like in mexico and even on the baja peninsula actually next time dr bird is overwintering in baja i'm going to ask him to take some videos for us and show us his cardinals there i don't think any of you have any difficulty distinguishing uh, males and females because of course it's the males that are so red and bright and they are the ones that are on all the christmas cards both females and males sing the same song but it's actually females that modify their song to include some information in most cases is when the male is supposed to bring the food to the nest uh, cardinals also have local dialects so your midwestern cardinal might have a hard time keeping up with your east coast cardinal here in Quebec, we are at the most northern point of their range, so we don't see them as often or we don't get as many of them in our backyard or bird feeders. So whenever a couple or even just one cardinal shows up here, we all get so excited. Cardinals are rather skittish. They like uh, to hang out in dense uh, vegetation. That's why cedar hedges are very popular here. You know, in the winter, I actually move a bird feeder or two into the cedar hedge because that's where cardinals seem to be quite happy and feed there for hours. They also like to build their nests in densely wooded areas, but it should also have a bit of a clearing because they love to show off their beautiful colors and their beautiful songs. Cardinals, just like many other birds, uh, eat bugs and insects, but they also love peanuts and suet and sunflower seeds. And in my backyard, I find they like safflower seeds the most. I actually leave a whole feeder just for them because when grackles empty all the other feeders, they don't touch that one. And I know that there's always something left for cardinals should they decide to come and visit me. Cardinals are ground feeding birds. You know, they love to face their food when they eat. The reason we have that cardinal ring in our Squirrel Buster Plus is because we were trying to accommodate them and make it more comfortable for them to eat at a tube feeder. So if you don't see cardinals on your feeders, but you see them more on the ground, it's very normal for them. One of the things, again, that we did to teach them how to eat at a seed feeder is we designed that tray that you can put under the plus feeder. So that's how they start. They come to the tray, they eat whatever is dropped from the tube feeder, and then once they become more comfortable and more used to the feeder, they go to the tube feeder. Northern Cardinals nest from February to mid-April. You've probably seen videos and pictures of them kissing, but it's actually part of their courtship when males feed females. Another part of their courtship, it's both males and females attacking car mirrors and uh, windows, trying to protect their nesting site from that other bird. Both males and females choose a nesting site, but it's the female that builds the nests 
and males help out uh, sometimes. They have one to two broods. She lays about one to five eggs and the young fledge when they're about nine to 15 days old. Well, everyone, it's time to wrap up. I hope you'll plant a berry or fruit bearing bush or tree on your property. Our photo contest is still open. It's get your ducks in a row. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.